In this lecture, we will cover the maximum profit or loss of a call option for both the buyer and the seller. As with any trade, it is important to be aware of the risk you're taking before placing the trade. Firstly, this table shows how to calculate the profit or loss of a call option position for either the buyer or the seller. For now, to keep things simple, we've left out the position size, i.e. the contract multiplier and number of contracts. What we are doing here to calculate the profit or loss is calculating the value of the call option at expiry, then adjusting for the premium to give the final profit or loss. The value of a call option that expires in the money is the underlying price at expiry minus the strike price. So we could write this as call value equals price minus strike. To calculate the buyer's profit or loss, we then just need to subtract the premium they paid from the value of the call option at expiry. This leads us to calculating the call buyer's P&L as call value minus premium. As we just discovered, when the call expires in the money, the call value is price minus strike. So we can write this as price minus strike minus premium. So you can see how the formula for the buyer's P&L in the table is derived. The seller's P&L is of course just the negative of this. So the seller's P&L can be calculated as premium minus call value, which equals the premium minus the price minus the strike, which equals premium plus strike minus price. So you can see how the formula for the seller's P&L in the table is also derived. When the call option has no value at expiry, because the price expires below the strike, you can substitute in zero for the call value to give the call option buyer's P&L as call value minus premium, which equals zero minus premium, which equals minus premium. And the call seller's P&L equals premium minus call value, which equals premium minus zero or just the premium. As a quick example, assume a trader buys a call option with a strike price of $50 and pays a premium of $4 per share. What is the profit or loss for the buyer and seller if the price at expiry is $70? We have a price of $70, a strike of $50 and a premium of $4. As $70 is greater than $50, the price at expiry is clearly above the strike price, so we will use the top row of formulas. The buyer of the call option has a profit or loss of price minus strike minus premium, which equals 70 minus 50 minus 4, which equals $16. So the buyer has a profit of $16 per share. The seller of the call option has a profit or loss of premium plus strike minus price, which equals 4 plus 50 minus 70, which equals minus $16. So the seller has a loss of $16 per share. As well as just being able to calculate the profit or loss for a specific value, it's also useful to know the maximum profit or loss of any option position you're thinking of opening. In particular, it's useful to know if your profit or loss is limited or unlimited. For the call option buyer, their profit continues to increase for every dollar increase in the underlying price. Because of this, their maximum profit is theoretically unlimited. In reality, of course, an asset price will not go to infinity, so it's also common to refer to it as undefined. In other words, it can be very large, but it's impossible to say exactly how large. When the call option buyer has their maximum profit, the call option seller has their maximum loss. Again, this is unlimited or undefined if you prefer. For every dollar higher the underlying price is at expiry, that's another dollar the call seller owes to the call buyer. Back to the call option buyer. They suffer their maximum loss when the underlying price at expiry is below the strike price of the call option. When this is the case, the call value is zero and they lose the premium they paid for the option, but nothing more. Similarly, for the call option seller, they make their maximum profit when the underlying price at expiry is below the strike price of the call option. The seller gets to keep the premium they collected and does not have to pay anything out. Their maximum profit is equal to the premium collected. In summary, the buyer of a call option has a fixed risk and potentially unlimited profit. The seller of a call option has potentially unlimited risk and a fixed profit. 
Although the calculations here are relatively simple, it is always wise to be aware of whether your option position has a fixed risk or an undefined risk. It is also important to be aware of which direction you have risk in. For a single call option, this is not difficult, but this principle will come into play much more in later sections when we start combining multiple options into a single strategy.